Good morning, Illini. I'm Andrea Flores, your UI7 News correspondent. I am here in Taylorville, Illinois, where just this past weekend, an EF3 tornado passed through here. And as you can see behind me, the damage speaks for itself. Much in the tornado's path was destroyed. Since shoe refresh began in 2017, they've cleaned about 4,000 to 5,000 shoes, just like this one, which they call a scrubber. Along with asking for donations for their GoFundMe page, UIUC Ayuda also has a list of demands from the current administration, which includes an end to the criminalization of all refugees, respect for the refugees, and processing all refugee claims. There are other demands also listed here as well. While taking a look at results from across the country, the U.S. House of Representatives is now projected to be controlled by the Democrats. So this is a flip from the Republicans. While many races are still yet to be called, Democrats will likely have control over 218 seats. However, the U.S. Senate is now fully red. For Ryan Pancon, the other master gardeners here at the Idea Garden, the thefts are not so much about the money lost. It's about losing out on their hard work and items they love that crushes their morale. Switching gears to a very important race happening tonight in Illinois, the race to the governor's mansion in Springfield. This race has been an interesting one between four candidates, but with two frontrunners, Republican Governor Bruce Rauner and Democratic challenger J.B. Pritzker. Good morning, Illini. I'm Andrea Flores, your UI7 News correspondent. I am here in Taylorville, Illinois, where just this past weekend, an EF3 tornado passed through here. And as you can see behind me, the damage speaks for itself. Much in the tornado's path was destroyed. Down trees, shredded insulation, and lost toys are some of the remnants that litter Taylorville roads after Saturday's storm. Home of the tornadoes, this small city isn't a stranger to the occasional twister. But Fire Captain Ron Smith says something about this storm felt different. We always seem to dodge a bullet, but for some reason everybody had the feeling something was going to happen that night, and we were all prepared. And like I said, everybody thought that for once and nobody's ever thought of it that way before. The fire department blew their alarms twice that evening, which they don't normally do. They believe it's made all the difference, as thankfully, no one died that night. The second alarm may have saved one woman and her daughter. Resident Margaret Chester is deaf, and her sister Sue Hogue describes that her family was very fortunate during that storm. The first alarm went off and then it went, then it stopped. And then so they thought, oh, it's just another false alarm. So. My sister is, was downstairs, my niece was upstairs, and she heard it come and she heard the roar. So she was able to go downstairs and get my sister and their pets and get them to the basement just in time. One downside for the family, they just moved to Taylorville last year. They really just got settled in here, so now we've gotta, they've got to start all over with that. But despite this, Sue remains positive. Even though her sister's home has some damage, it's still structurally sound, which unfortunately, some of her neighbors weren't as lucky. City officials say that reconstruction and cleanup can take weeks, if not months. In Taylorville, for Good Morning Illini, I'm Andrea Flores. I feel like we're really like shifting the culture of, of U of I because you walk around and you see so many people with these dirty shoes on and now it's kind of like getting, getting clean shoes is kind of becoming a thing now. Never was really a big shoe guy like that. It kind of just was an idea that uh, came about with me and my partner. We got some smelly shoes that we do in yeah. here. The best part is just about the process of like watching this thing grow. Because me and my partner started this thing from like scratch, literally. On Facebook, there was this guy in New York that was homeless and he decided to try out the idea of this basic shoe cleaning. You know, you got a gloves, apron. The next step will probably be some masks. You know, the students are always active. They're going to the bars. They're really you know, engaging in, in social life and making sure that uh, that they have clean shoes to, to feel, you know, hip or whatever is, is something that we felt like uh, was important. So these Tims are going to come out literally looking brand new. It's, it's not rocket science at all, it's just about attention to detail. I think the best part is just the customer experience, like we're enablers, we're able to make somebody's life kind of completely different in such a small way. Oh, uh, Red Lion floor juice, yeah, or bar juice, or however you want to call it. Somebody can, can go out to the bar, know that their shoes are going to get clean. If they wake up the next morning like, I have this interview tomorrow, I didn't ever get my dress shoes polished or whatever, we can pick those up, do that too. So it's just about creating an experience. On the south side of campus, far away from an often loud main quad and green street, there's the quiet and beautiful Idea Garden. 
but something less than ideal has hit the garden. A string of thefts that started in the summer of 2017 has continued into this fall. Garden volunteers and officials have had enough, including University Extension educator Ryan Pankow. We're pretty confident it's somebody that knew what they were taking and it wasn't just a random plant that somebody dug out of here. From shrubs and plants, to outhouses, to children's garden trinkets, even benches and beloved rabbit figurines like these here, have been swiped. For Ryan Pancon and the other master gardeners here at the Idea Garden, the thefts are not so much about the money lost. It's about losing out on their hard work and items they love that crushes their morale. Garden volunteers don't have any leads in mind. Neither does Cassidy Brandt, a frequent visitor. I can't really imagine why someone would want to take something from such an awesome part of our community. Um, it's so beautiful and just Taking things, why? University police have increased patrols, but it's hard to keep a constant eye on the entire garden. With no electricity currently running through the garden, cameras are out of the question. This isn't the first time thieves have struck the garden. Vegetable crops are often picked by folks that visit the garden, and uh, if they weren't picked, we would donate them to a food pantry, so we figure those go to a, you know, a good home, somebody that probably needs them and uses them. The newer string of thefts, however, have had a higher impact. Pancaw estimates over $1,000 in plants alone have been stolen, not including the other missing items. This is an ongoing investigation. Anyone with information is encouraged to call University Police. For Good Morning Illini in Urbana, I'm Andrea Flores, UI7 News correspondent. In the last six years, the Illini Veterans Memorial 5K has raised $50,000, and by the end of today's raise, they hope to have raised $60,000. People saw it as their civic duty and saw it as really important to either support the current administration or go against the current administration. So both sides were really encouraged mm -hmm. to stand by what they believe in and actually, you know, make their voices heard. Good morning, Illini. I'm Andrea Flores, your UI7 News correspondent with your campus and Champaign-Urbana News. But first, we have some national breaking news for you. The Senate just voted 51 to 49 in favor of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court Justice nomination. Don't have a car, need a ride to the midterm polls? No problem, Uber is offering discounted rides to polling locations. With reduced voting sites from previous years, some people will have to travel further than others. Uber wanted to make sure that the millions of Americans voting didn't have to worry about travel inconveniences. They will offer $10 rides to polling places in U.S. territories. A poll button in the Uber app will pinpoint nearby voting sites that prompt users to ride with the promotional code. Uber is hoping to help reduce costs across the U.S. and promote voting. According to a press release from the Attorney General Lisa Madigan's office, the lawsuit alleges that the company, Suburban Express, harassed and discriminated against their customers. We do have some updated numbers for you tonight on the House of Representatives. So according to CNN, 155 seats have been secured for the Democrats, leaving them to keep the House as opposed to the 153 seats on the Republican side. Um, 40 seats in the Senate are for the Democrats after tonight's midterm elections, which polls are still closing in the West, and there are 50 seats yeah. that the Republicans have secured in the Senate. So we've got all this up-to-date stuff coming in still tonight. Pretty surprising to see how many people weren't sure who was running for governor, especially considering our current governor is running for governor. <laughs> That's all for this morning. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Andrea Flores. Have a great day, Chicago.